Welcome back to Asteroid Day 2017. And as we approach the last few minutes of our broadcast here from Luxembourg, as we prepare to hand over to our colleagues in America, it seems right that we talk to someone from America now. And I'm joined on Skype uh, by the bad astronomer himself, Phil Plate. How are you? How's Asteroid Day? Hi, it looks like it's going pretty well. We haven't been hit yet. <laughs> There's still time, and if it happens, it's happening on your watch. Oh, well, I hate to hear that, but thanks. Thanks for the responsibility there. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, uh, your perception of Asteroid Day and how the general public receive it in America. Well, I think that we need to know more about asteroids. There's already uh, a, a lot about them in the public consciousness. We have movies and TV shows, lots of articles. Uh, they're very popular on the web when it comes to astronomy stories. Whenever I write about an asteroid, it's usually, uh, it's usually received pretty well. Uh, but I don't think people understand exactly what these things represent, the, the threat uh, not only that they represent, but also uh, what they can do for us that's beneficial. You know, they, they brought life to us, uh, perhaps, and water uh, four, four billion years ago or more when the Earth was, uh, was still forming. Uh, but now, with our civilization spreading all over the entire planet, even a small asteroid impact can cause a lot of damage. We learned that in 2013 when Chelyabinsk, a uh, city in Russia, had an asteroid blow up over it, uh, a small one. I mean, that was only a 19-meter asteroid, 60 feet across. Uh, but it shattered windows and injured a thousand people. If it had been larger or coming in at a steeper angle, uh, that could have been a problem. And so I'm, I'm more than happy to write about this, talk about this, and let people know that we need to understand this. this we, need to, we need to find them. We need to characterize them. We need to, to visit them with spacecraft so that we understand them better. Not only so that we can prevent an impact, but also so that we can learn about them and perhaps use them. If they have water on them, if they have uh, uh, metals, for example, like, like iron, titanium, things that we can use, we can, put, uh, we can visit them with our spacecraft and then use them as resources to help explore the solar system. And long, Phil, may you help us uh, get this message out to people. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And now it's time to go over for our final panel here uh, from Luxembourg with Brian. Thanks. Well, as we draw to a close here in Luxembourg, we have a panel of the, uh, the I suppose, the Asteroid Day alumni, I might call it, uh, to, to summarise uh, what you've made of the day. So, Rusty. Well, I think if, if I look back on, on the day uh, and also reflect on other occasions in talking with the public about the <laughs> asteroid issue, and particularly the planetary defence element of asteroids, one of the things, the reactions that I often get from people is, wow, this is scary. You know, this kind of scares people. It's, it's like, oh my God, we can get hit any time by an asteroid. You know, it's not at all scary. <laughs> you, you just didn't know before that you could get hit by an asteroid <laughs> any, any moment, right? So now that, you know, now that we know all this stuff about asteroids and predicting their orbit or pre calculating their orbits and predicting an impact, and capability to deflect, you know, now you should feel good, right? I mean, now we can begin to, in fact, affect our own future. Uh, and, and that, to me, is something which uh, I think people ought to, ought to recognize. Not the scary part, yeah, there, there are scary parts of it, uh, but it's better to know that something can happen and know that you can do something about it. That's, I think, the important thing that uh, can be, I haven't heard a lot about today. Yes. I should say that we've only got about five minutes. So this is the only panel where we have to finish on time to hand over to the States. <laughs> Therefore, you've got about a minute each to summarise. So perhaps if I go around the panel. So. OK. Uh, what I found out and the result of this day is that people don't know too much about the asteroids. And this Asteroid Day event, it's very welcome to be organized every year. So I've got a lot of questions. I Skype you with a lot of people from around the world. Uh, I answer the questions of the television. And I found out that the people really want to know. The people are scary when they don't know what happened. When they know things, when they know what could happen, they are prepared. They are prepared mentally, they are prepared physically, they take measures, technological measures, and could defend ourselves, could defend them, could defend the Earth. So this is my conclusion, that as much as we know, as less we have to fear asteroids, and as much measures we can take to defend the planet and ourselves. Yes, Mark. So I'm, I'm 
skeptical by nature. And when Grig approached me uh, less than three years ago about his vision for Asteroid Day I th and, 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 and told me, you know, how grand it was, I kind of thought, Oh, I, I don't know if I really. I, I think I said it I in remember. a. I think I said it in a polite way, but I was, <laughs> I was skeptical. And then the the the, the asteroid uh, declaration with a hundredfold increase in discovery rate. I thought, you know, I'm not sure that's even possible. But, you know, if you'd have asked me uh, about what SpaceX is now doing, I would have said that's impossible too. And, and now they're doing it. So, so I have to lighten up a little bit maybe on my skepticism. And I think the, you know, seeing what's, what, what people are planning with the LSST and with NEOCAM infrared telescopes in space, I think we can increase the rate significantly and discover 90% of those objects greater than 140 meters in the next decade or so. Patrick. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, uh, what I think is fascinating, uh, what we saw today, is the fact that asteroids interest uh, a, a large community with very different uh, uh, expertise and also very different reasons to be interested in asteroids, planetary defense, science, and mining. And uh, uh, we have a series of space missions uh, in the US and in Japan that are going to visit asteroids. And at the European, I have actually a strong message, which is that we have now the opportunity in Europe to do a mission which will actually combine the, all these interests, which is mining, which is planetary defense, and which is science, to do a mission that can be a deflection test uh, so that at least we also serve the planetary, planetary defense uh, uh, right. And with all the knowledge we gain, it serves resources and science. And by the way, this kind of mission costs only 34 cents of euro per European citizen. So it's a cheap life insurance, <laughs> because if we do this deflection test, we verify the technology, and we can be uh, even more peaceful than we are now uh, uh, respect to this risk. Yeah, that's great. Huh? And I think the thing that I'm most excited about is that we have um, all of the space agencies participating in the program, JAXA, ESA, NASA, um, the, the German space agencies, and really at the heart, and it was so great to see everybody on the Skype and to see the astronauts talking uh, to the or, uh, uh, events happening around the world, the heart of Asteroid Day are the independently organized events that are happening around the world. And they are the heart and soul, and they are going to be able to move this movement and build this educational um, dialogue and campaign all around the world. And so we're really grateful for all mm. of their work. They are the heart. Yes. And Greg. Well, exactly. I think that's it. I mean, it's, it's really, for me, it's always been a problem. I think there's an opportunity and at the end of the day, it's, it's beautiful to know that there is a problem that we can solve, not as one country, not as one nation, but as one species. And we can do this for the greater good of this planet, not of my country, but of this planet, for all the species that, you know, crawl over this beautiful place that we call home. And so I think that's our duty. And I think, you know, it's not really just us. It's really all the coordinators, all the government, the private, it's everybody. It affects us all, whether, it's, whether you see it as an opportunity or as a threat, it does affect everybody. And so we need to find solutions together. And it's, uh, it's really a way in these political times that we live in to come together and to solve something that is really quite solvable. And, and, and send out an inspiring message to everybody around the world. We can do this. So let's get to work and let's get it done. Yes, and can I just say thank you very much for asking me to host today. I, it's been a remarkable experience. And I think you're right that what I see is one of the great challenges. It's both a problem and an opportunity. And uh, the, the, the steps we're taking to seize that opportunity are quite remarkable, I think. So and, thank and you I all. I think it's fascinating and it's a very important message for the young generations. Mm -hmm. I mean, these asteroids provide us uh, a way to do, you know, adventures like Indiana Jones yes. when we go to see them. And the public yeah. like that, the young people like that. It's a way for them to understand that science is fun and great, and we need them for yes. the future. Absolutely. Well, thank, thank you all. I've got to hand over to Sabinia. Uh, final goodbyes. 
Thank you very much, Brian, and thank you also to the team and all the initiators behind Astro Day. It's been an absolutely, I would say, epic day today. We've had so many renowned experts and talents here. And above all, I think to conclude a bit, maybe you also agree, Stuart, the fact that, you know, the purpose of this day was a platform to raise awareness, to have an educational purpose. And I really do think that that's a quest that we've hopefully um, also fulfilled for all of you watching. And also the fact, you know, hearing the panel debates and also listening to Etienne Schneider, who talks about Luxembourg becoming the hub for space resources, taking the lead, and, and by that also supporting Asteroid Day and everything around right. it. It's been an absolutely spectacular day, mm -hmm. but we have saved the very best until last. We have some very special guests. Where are they? Step up, because we have um, a special mm -hmm. announcement to make. Matt. Wow, yes. Um, I had a really lovely piece of news this afternoon mm -hmm. that um, I've been observing asteroids for, for many years and an asteroid that I discovered more than 10 years ago um, has just officially been named Asteroid Day by the International wow. Astronomical Union. What I just got gift. the email this afternoon. It's, uh, it's asteroid number 248750, officially named Asteroid Day. My uh, first uh, question. Yeah. How far away is it? Is it reachable? Ooh, <laughs> probably somewhere in the region of about 400 million miles, but that's a guess off the top of my head. And my follow-up question, how close is it coming? No, well, we don't have to worry about um, asteroid day hitting the Earth for the simple reason that it's a completely normal main belt asteroid. But um, there's one of many. But I'm particularly pleased about it for two reasons. The first one is it's the first asteroid ever discovered from Luxembourg. Wow. And it was dis I discovered it 10 years ago. When back then, myself and my colleague Eric Boutini from the Natural History Museum were the only two people in Luxembourg who even cared about asteroids. And look at this now. Here <laughs> we look at are this now. now. And this is just the beginning. Max, thank you so much. My it's pleasure. now time where we hand over to our colleagues at NASA in America. But on behalf of everyone here at Asteroid Day in Luxembourg, I wish you a very happy, happy Asteroid, Asteroid Day. Day. Happy Woo!